Welcome to the Interdisciplinary Center for Staff Development. We invite you to the interview with Professor Richard Griffith. My name is Olaf Flack and we will be talking about uh, the future of work and the uh, perspective of ar artificial intelligence. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Hello. Uh, our guest is Professor Richard Griffith, who is a professor of work and organi organizational psychology uh, at uh, Florida Institute of Technology. He is also a director of uh, cross-cultural management uh, uh, at the Florida Institute of Technology. He published many books and uh, papers on uh, cross-cultural management, uh, leadership, uh, team management, as well as uh, work and organizational psychology. Mr. Professor, uh, we could talk uh, a few months ago online and uh, we had an interview on uh, competences uh, in the universities. Today we can meet uh, in person uh, in Katowice at the Congress of, uh, Association of European Association of Work uh, and Organizational Psychology. Uh, how do you like Katowice? How do you like Poland? I love this city. So I've been here five or six times and have good friends here. So first, it's good to see very good friends. And it's been nice to be able to see the growth of the city. There's been a tremendous amount of construction in Katowice. And, and you can tell that uh, the city's just, just, just blooming. It's nice to hear it. It's uh, our city of, and also our university. Uh, so I have a first question to you. Uh, what is your current interest in the scientific uh, area? I would say the primary area that I do research is in the area of cross-cultural competence. Make sure that people are prepared when they are uh, working overseas or they may be working in international teams. So I do most of my work there. I'd say the second area is in leadership development, primarily in the area of experiential learning. So rather than putting a leader in a workshop, we have them learn from actually doing the job. But it requires more reflection and, and you have to kind of guide that so that the learning is productive. Oh, it's, it's nice because we are going to talk today about the future of work, I think, also in virtual teams and, uh, and leadership, but maybe by the in, uh, artificial intelligence. So I have a, qu a few questions Great. about this to you. And uh, what, is, uh, what are your projects, scientific projects now? What do you conduct? So the biggest one I've got going right now is a funded research program with the U.S. Army, the Army Research Institute. It's looking at the development of self-regulation in junior leaders. Self-regulation is usually thought of as uh, self-control, where you control your thoughts, your emotions, your behaviors. Uh, and we have to be able to find a way to develop that uh, in, in a method that is scalable. So ultimately, it very well may be technology that we're using and we're exploring the use of artificial intelligence in some of these technologies. Oh, it's very, very interesting. Uh, so I have uh, the first question uh, about, uh, um, about the world, generally speaking. Uh, we had uh, big changes in the last few years uh, in a way which we in which we work and which we, we, we live. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, these changes will increase in the future and they will be somehow uh, fast and bigger and, big, big, bigger, and bigger or uh, they will stop? Uh. I think we live in a world that is quite volatile and quite complex. So, so I, I don't see that stopping. The, the nature of the changes that might be coming will differ. Of course, I think we don't expect them to be the same, but I think the pace and the complexity, uh, the ambiguity of these types of conditions that we're facing is just the new normal. I think it's something that, that managers and leaders need to prepare for is that, that you, it's just rare when you have a smooth ride. The ride is gonna be bumpy. Mm -hmm. And do you think that artificial intelligence um, will influence on us uh, in these areas such as work? Absolutely, absolutely. How? How? Yeah, I think this is uh, probably the newest and maybe the most productive tool that we'll have for the, for the manager. So in, in the first sense, artificial intelligence is gonna help us in terms of managing what are the mountains of data 
that we collect. We, we've collected more data in the past year than we have in the entire history of humankind. So it used to be that, that leaders didn't have enough data to be able to make decisions. Now they have too much and they can't manage it and they can't analyze it. But if we're using what is uh, machine learning methods or, or some deep learning methods, then we can have what is real-time analysis of data to be able to give managers at least some sense of the environment that they're in. And I think then they can make better decisions. So that's the first use I think of, of artificial intelligence will just be to guide some of this data analytics that has been done manually and mm -hmm. frankly is, is too cumbersome for people to do now. Um, this is one side, uh, the data, a uh, very, mm, let's say, engineering approach. Yeah. And on the other side, uh, what is uh, the, inf the impact of uh, work and organizational psychology and what we can do from this point of view? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. The, so when you mentioned the engineering side of it, a typical engineering approach is they think about the technology and what the technology can do, but they often don't think about the user and, and uh, the, the attitudes of the user towards the technology. So you have the best technology in the world and if someone doesn't implement it, then it just sits on a shelf. So I think work in organizational psychology can help uh, in terms of the change management of the rollout of these particular systems looking at how people interact with the systems and then building them in such a way that it's friendly for the user. Also, they can start to think a little bit about uh, the trust that people have to have in these systems. So, as you well know, many people use technology, but they don't utilize it fully because they don't trust it fully. So in the military, every aircraft has a button you can push and it will land the plane. No one ever presses that button. They want their hands on the yoke of that plane when they land it because they don't trust the system. And then you lose all the power of the technology. So I think that's where work in organizational psychology can really come in. We can start to look at the human element of it and how the human uh, teams with the technology to be able to, uh, to optimize the outcomes. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you talk about the trust, uh, what do you think if we could, uh, for example, collaborate with, uh, in a team with robots or with some artificial intelligence uh, agents? Uh, what about the trust uh, to such um, agents? Yeah, I think where we're at now is people inherently distrust Mm -hmm. the technology, uh, because it's new and, and it interacts in a way that is different than our human counterparts. So if you and I were sitting here having a discussion and you make a decision, I can ask you about the rationale and you can explain it to me. Now, it may be just a justification, but I get a sense that I understand why you've made a decision. The machine won't do that. The machine's decision is going to be based on a mathematical model. And it probably will be something that I can't quite comprehend. So I don't get the blank spaces filled in when I have an artificially intelligent partner. And what a human will do is fill in those spaces themselves. Mm -hmm. And usually when you're interacting with someone who is different than you, there are negative emotions that come to the surface. And an artificially intelligent entity will automatically be categorized as different. So I think inherently there's this trust issue is a really big one that we're going to need to overcome. And we'll have to think about how the entities interact with humans in such a way that they can engender trust and they can they can build trust. Okay, so let's go further in these predictions and I would like to ask you about uh, not collaborating with uh, members who would be robots but with a manager yeah. who would be a robot. What about uh, such collaboration? I think that's an interesting one. When we were, we were chatting and you were telling me where your research is. So, so my ideas on this would be I wouldn't start with an entity and make them a manager initially. I think they should be promoted just like a human. So you'd be part of the mm -hmm. team and it should, that, I mean, I think that allows it to learn more. So if you have an artificially intelligent manager, the learning sample will be huge, but every team is a little different. So you want some local learning too. And I think if you're part of the team and then you're promoted to assistant manager and then maybe manager if, if, it's, if it's working, then people might trust that entity a little bit more. But if you just make an artificially intelligent entity my manager, I'm not sure I'll trust it right off the bat. I, I would need to see it for a while before I would trust it. 
That's just right. that's not the science. That's just me talking. Yes. So, uh, as, uh, I, as, as, as I understand, uh, firstly, this um, agent should be a member of the team, and then. Uh, promoted to maybe, a BMA manager, maybe. and and uh, it could uh, let us trust him more. Yeah, and trust the full system, because uh -huh. uh, humans really believe in fairness at a very deep level. So if you get inequities that occur, then it it brings on a lot of negative emotions. And if all of a sudden someone is just a manager and they had a fast track to management, when I that track is not open for me, that's not fair or mm -hmm. won't be viewed as fair. And I think when you have those inequities, then people may react to those in ways that are so somewhat unpredictable. I think that would be an interesting research question. Well, uh, so maybe there will be some research on it. Maybe, yeah? maybe. And uh, what about the competences, the new competences, uh, which people would need in such a situation? Yeah. I think one of the competencies that you would need to have would be a tolerance for ambiguity. Mm -hmm. So we often think about computer interactions as being quite certain. You know, it's, it's really at the end of the day, it's zeros and ones. So it is certain at some level, but your experience will be new. And when you have new experiences, then people don't quite know how to respond to it. So I think being open to what are different kinds of experiences and experimenting and seeing what works and what doesn't work. I don't know if that's a competency or a disposition. You can learn it, you can get better at it, but it, it, it may have a bit of a dispositional component to it as well. I think also there are some partnering competencies that we would need to think about because just like humans, an artificially intelligent entity will have talents in a certain area. And I would need to determine what does it do well? What does it not do well? How does that fit into the team? So the team composition I have to be thinking about and thinking about uh, what is the optimal composition and how do I distribute tasks in such a way that will optimize the, the performance. And I think that will be new for managers because the They'll be uncertain about what are the capabilities of the entity. So th those are two that, off the top of my head, that I could think of. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the first issue uh, reminds me uh, my own uh, experiments with managers, with students who played the roles of managers. Uh, one of uh, such a manager, uh, for example, planned goals and tasks, and uh, he didn't change from the be very beginning and to the end of the project. And another one uh, was prototyping. Yeah. And maybe prototyping is a new competence, as you said, yeah. uh, for the future. Not, uh, uh, not following the procedures which we learned at school, but uh, being flexible and uh, prototype uh, our work. That makes sense to me. Um, I hadn't thought about that, but the notion, failure is something that we, see as, we now see as desirable. It used to be something that managers were trained to avoid. But failing is good because then you can learn and you just don't want to fail twice at the same thing. <laughs> yes. uh, so the th same thing I think would be true. You would want to build in opportunities for failure, both for the artificially intelligent system and for the human. Because when you solve a problem together, then you are building trust. Mm -hmm. So that's an opportunity to, to be actually become a team. I think that, that will be a challenge in that will people view this entity as a teammate or they view it as a tool? Mm -hmm. Those are two different, different things. The way that you interact with a shovel is different than you interact with a friend. Uh, and that's a big, that's gonna be a big leap for humans to make, to, to see them as a, an equivalent uh, you know, team member or an, an equivalent entity that they could partner with. Well, you said uh, important uh, sentence: uh, solving a problem together will build trust. Yeah. Uh, so I have to I have to remember. And uh, another thing, uh, you said about talents which could be achieved or gained by the artificial manager. Uh, what do you think? How such an artificial manager could learn these talents, or who, who could get these talents? That's interesting. Um, there are some that. They, they do quite well now. 
So on the analytical side, I think that's where we've seen the, the most use of artificial intelligence. So in analysis, in dissecting what is large, uh, ambiguous data, then, then machine learning does a good job of doing that. Uh -huh. But managers, another thing that they have to be able to manage or lead uh, is the emotional state of the employee. That will be interesting to me because the artificially intelligent entities that I've had a chance to interact with mimic hum human interactions, but they don't understand them. And being understood builds empathy. So I would be interested to see could this technology evolve in that area to where it had what was an understanding of human emotions, mm -hmm. not just being able to mimic them. Not to pr pretending, but understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. We're, we're the technology is now, it's not capable of that. But, but it's growing so fast that to say that it, it can't do that, I think is foolish because every year we see new technology come out that is disruptive technology. So uh, I think it would be naive to believe that it wouldn't be able to do that at some point. Mm -hmm. And do you think that artificial intelligence uh, will influence uh, equally many areas of life, for example, medicine, IT, engineering or uh, economics, or there will be some um, islands of uh, free of artificial intelligence? This is sort of speculation. I do believe it's going to touch almost every corner. Mm -hmm. uh, there are areas where it will be resisted. So for instance, in the, in the arts. So I'm a musician. Uh, I, I had a chance, I was just in, in Austria. I had a chance to be in a museum that had a system that uh, had, had, had analyzed the works of uh, Mozart and Strauss and then had finished some of their unfinished compositions. And you wouldn't be able to tell. It was really remarkable music that came out of it. But if you asked a musician, is that music, you'd get a variety of answers. Because I mm -hmm. think it means different things to different people. Sometimes emotion pours itself out in the music. And we know that that artificial intelligent entity does not have emotion at this stage. Mm -hmm. To some people, they would say that's not music. They would say that's mimicking music. Uh, so they, they would be resistant. And I think in areas that will require creativity, it will be some time before people could learn to accept it. Not all, I think some will accept it right away uh, for a variety of reasons. Some musicians are in it to make money and I, I've heard them already say, it's fine if an artificially intelligent entity copies my music as long as I make money off of it. Oh, yes. So they're in the business and they're fine, but the creatives I think will resist it. Yes. Mm, I think so. I agree with you, uh, because sometimes uh, when I talk to musicians, they they say that they can listen, they can distinguish the difference uh, between uh, performance uh, done by uh, humans and done yeah. by uh, artificial instruments. Uh, just, there are some breaks uh, uh, and some little uh, spaces between sounds, yeah. which is uh, which are uh, just. Uh, this, uh, similar, not si not so similar, and uh, they can distinguish the thing. Yes, yeah. Something as simple as the timing of a song. Yes, so timing. Humans are never perfectly on time. I mean, even even at their best, they're they're close, but they're but there is variation, and the variation is often tied to the emotions that you're having. So, when a computer is creating music, it's going to be on time, and then it loses some of the life. Mm -hmm. that is in the music and the life is what people listen to it for so so will it eventually learn that yes it will if you give it enough of a learning sample it will learn that will humans be able to distinguish it that's a good question we'll find out we'll find out yeah, so so you, you give me some hope that yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. every area will be replaced but i think that that metaphor probably will play out in management as well so managers aren't always on time per se they read the room and they try to understand what their followers need in the moment and they vary their approach and um, and it's not always rational. Mm -hmm. I think that's an interesting element is that we, we're assuming rationality 
in management, but people aren't rational. They're at the least rational beings on the planet. Uh, so th being able to model irrationality will be quite interesting in some ways. Well, it's great, uh, modeling irrationality. This is the question, how to do it. And uh, I, have, I have a question about it, but maybe I will go to it sure, sure. back uh, in, a, in a few minutes. Okay. Um, modeling ir irrationality, this is a good question. Uh, so what about um, uh, the technology? I have a question about technology because uh, I was uh, thinking about it. Uh, we have such a rapid development in technology. But we can't buy, we cannot buy uh, artificial manager, for example, who would be a double of Steve Jobs or yeah, Elon, yeah. Elon Musk. Why? Why can we copy uh, the way of managing and yeah, yeah, implement yeah. these procedures, ways, techniques into the machine uh, and buy, for example, private yeah. Steve Jobs? So I would first say, the distinction I would make is I would not say Steve Jobs was a manager. So he may have had management talent, but Steve Jobs was a visionary. Mm -hmm. And in some ways what he does is by definition unusual. You can't find another human to do what Steve Jobs does. So when we think about his talents, you know, talents are normally distributed. Steve Jobs is out in the tails of the distribution. So in some ways, he's one in a million, one in 10 million. What machines are very good at is replicating tasks that are redundant mm -hmm. and, and that are repeatable. Nothing about Steve Jobs is repeatable. Nothing about Elon Musk is repeatable in some ways. Elon Musk's, his entire approach is breaking the rules. And that's how he's been so successful. And a machine will never break the rules because it can only follow the code, the code mm -hmm. of the rules. So I think we're a long way from being able to replicate the creativity of, of visionaries like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. Management, day-to-day -day management of a uh, production process or a service process, that I think is achievable. And we'll see that in our lifetime without a doubt. We're probably seeing it already mm -hmm. in many ways. It's, that's not future technology, that's happening now. Mm -hmm. But, but creating a vision and getting people to buy into your vision, that's technology that I, I probably won't see in my lifetime. I, I don't believe I will. Well, so rather re repeatable actions yeah. uh, and um, typical for some situations. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so how, for example, the university uh, could look like if our president or a rector would be a manager, artificial manager? Do you, can you imagine it? Well, it would be better than the rector I have now, uh, <laughs> so that would be good. Um, but, uh, no, that's not true. We have a new president coming in. He's a, he's a fine gentleman, but... Uh, that's interesting to me. There are some elements of it that I think could be passed along to an artificially intelligent entity. So particularly like, maybe not rector or, or vice rector, but I could see like a chief financial officer without a doubt. So, but if I were a rector or a vice rector, I would wanna wake up every morning and know the financial state of my university. And mm -hmm. if I could just ask some questions and instantly get an answer, that would be fantastic. But again, I think those levels of rector or in particular rector, vice rector is more operational. So maybe there is a role there, but a rector is visionary. So you have to create a university that works in the environment that you're in and then be able to future proof it. Mm -hmm. And I think that takes vision and vision is difficult to train in humans. It's, I think it is the most difficult competency for leaders to gain. Some have it and some don't. And I would rather find someone who has it than try to train it. If I can't train a human to do it, can I train a artificially intelligent entity? I, I don't know. <laughs> These are all good research questions. Is it impossible? I would never say impossible. Is it improbable at this state? I think it's improbable. Mm -hmm. Just my opinion. And uh, what kind of advice could you give uh, to managers uh, how to cope with this situation 
uh, that uh, artificial managers can come yeah. and replace them from the work and psychology, uh, organizational psychology yeah. point of view? What kind of advice? Um, I think it's similar advice that we saw during the uh, Industrial Revolution. This has happened to humankind forever. This is just a new tool in many ways. What happens is we create a tool that uh, can replace a particular human function, and then the human gets to do something else and that they want to do. And really, does anybody want to be a manager of a redundant system? That's not a sexy job in many ways. It's doing the same thing every day, but maybe they have another talent that we could develop. So, so I find that typically is the pattern that we, we see is that when humans are replaced, we, I used to work in the automobile manufacturing uh, industry when I was young. Robots came in and did everything. Well, what do people do now? Well, they, they have higher skills and they've been taught to do other things and they're happy doing that. So I don't think humans will ever be replaced. It's just that they are, uh, they're, they're sort of moved into what is another area and usually it's, it's more desirable. They're less, likely, they're less likely to be harmed, whether that be physically Mm -hmm. You know, you're not cut or burnt like you used to be when you were working in a factory. Uh, or harmed psychologically by doing redundant tasks that don't keep you engaged. So I think, I think that we can partner well. It's, you know, it's, it's like any other tool except it's just so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. And do you think that managers would like to have uh, their doubles, so our say assistants, uh, to they could go for vacations, for holidays, yeah. and such an assistant could replace him for Absolutely. two weeks. Absolutely. I can't imagine there's a manager on the planet that wouldn't love that. You know, that, uh, that could walk away from wherever they're at knowing that there is a competent entity that is running things. And when I come back, I, I will know it's been taken care of well. So I think that level of, of uh, partnering in, in any organization would be welcomed. So it, maybe it's an idea for some uh, IT companies just to implement such yeah, yeah. as a person or assistant. Yeah. yeah, I think we have to try. You know, like all technology, when we first try it, it will be clumsy. I mean, I remember when I had my first digital watch, it didn't really work very well, it would, but it was really cool. And I loved it. They've got better and better and better. And they're almost perfect now. In fact, as close to perfect as you can get. I would imagine the same kind of progress will happen. And the first implementation of what are artificially intelligent management will probably be a bit clumsy, but it'll get better and better. And it'll get better fast. And that's what AI does, is it learns incredibly fast. So as long as we you know, are, have what is good programming, and now even with generative AI, it's writing its own code. So that's where I think this, the, the speed of learning will it, it, it just just uh, evolve. But don't you think that this is a dangerous yeah, yeah. issue, that uh, this, uh, this program, this application can uh, write it, uh, its own code and uh, decide uh, by, by his own? Yeah, it own? is. So that's an area that we need more development in as well. I think uh, going back to what I was saying earlier, engineers focus on the technology, not necessarily how it's being used. Another thing that they're not necessarily uh, focused on is the ethics. And you usually see that coming out of an area of philosophy or you may see uh, legal uh, ramifications and then the lawyers are involved, but we really need to be thinking about the ethics. Just because we can do something doesn't mean we should do something. And we need to think about our future uh, because if you write entities that can adapt themselves faster than we can adapt ourselves, that has the potential to be quite dangerous. I think we haven't uh, had a uh, similar situation in the past, that we, that we created uh, some kind of technology which could, which could uh, develop itself. Yes. Yeah? yeah, particularly as it starts to approach what we call sentience. So as we know, artificial intelligence is very good at mimicking human behaviors. but just recently, I mean, it's only a year ago, there was an engineer at Google that had said that the entity that they had built had become sentient. Now, Google doesn't seem to uh, believe this and has not really put out any public statements regarding this, but 
I don't think that'll be the first engineer that will say that. They're going to start to recognize, wait a minute, this machine knows what it's doing. And well, then we have an ethical obligation to the machine. If it becomes an entity that is self-aware and we are not being respectful, then that's another form of slavery. And I don't think we want to go there again. I mean, we, we know how that turned out one time. Uh, I'd prefer to see us not do that again. Mm -hmm. So, um, basing on it, what you said, I have uh, a question about my own vision of, uh, of uh, artificial management. Uh, a few years ago, I uh, imagined that we could set up two companies. Uh, one uh, would be uh, managed by the artificial manager and another yeah. one would be managed by the human one. And uh, what do you think? What, what would be uh, res the result of such a competition and yeah. what could be some dangerous uh, issues and some maybe, I don't know, um, advantages of this? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a beautiful way to go. So that's science and, that, and that's how we progress is to learn um, what works and what doesn't work or, or what might work better. The complication in that study, I mean, maybe it's not a complication, we would need to think about it, or what are the, what are the metrics? What are the outcome variables? Mm -hmm. Because, of course, productivity is going to be one people look at. But productivity is not the only variable. Uh, there is the emotions of the workers. There is the uh, commitment of the workers. So what if you lose all of your talent? What if they decide, I don't want to work for this entity, and they leave? That's a real issue, particularly now. The war for talent is huge. There's just not enough people to finish these jobs, which probably is why there's so much focus on artificial intelligence, or at least that's one of the drivers. But I think we have to look at the outcome variables. And there's a number of them that, that are intangibles that we typically don't think about when, when you're thinking about organizations. And I think we need to have a broad array of, of outcome variables, because I'll bet you, if I were to speculate that the artificial intelligent manager will win in some of those variables, but mm -hmm. not all, and the human manager would win in some of those variables, but not all. Intangible, I, intangible, measurable. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think the intangibles and the tangibles. I think you'll, you'll see a mix. And mm -hmm. that's why I really believe the potential for partnering is so high, is that just like humans, some humans do things better than others. And what do we do? Well, we put them in teams, and then you get the best of everything. I think the same is probably true when you have an artificially intelligent entity. Some will do tasks better than others and uh, better than humans, and some will do some things that won't be as good. And, but be, when you partner then, you can, oh, you can compensate for those kinds of weaknesses that might be there. So collaborating rather yeah. than competing. I think so. I, I think that's always the best model. I think that's the best model. Mm -hmm. In, I, I probably would be an unusual American because we like U.S. Americans like to compete so much, uh, but collaboration is always the best outcome. And and diverse teams, when they collaborate, always have the best outcomes. And how much more diverse can you get than an entity that isn't even human? So I think that's another interesting issue to me is how will people respond to the diversity of bringing in what is an entity that mm -hmm. is a non-human entity? Uh, because we struggle with diversity now. So this will be a, a big challenge, I think. This will be a big challenge. Yes, you're right that uh, collaboration uh, together and uh, work, working together with someone better than me is, uh, gives us always uh, good uh, results. And it could be like that, that yeah, we yeah. could work together with artificial intelligence, which would be better in something, but we would be better in something else. Mm -hmm. And the result would be better at all. I think so. The overall result should be overall. superior. Yes. And what about the competences? Go back with the competences. Uh, we said, you said about um, being flexible, mm -hmm. uh, learning new things. Uh, uh, generally speaking, if you could uh, make a list of, for example, three uh, competences in the future work, what kind of competences it would be? There would be. I still think there is a lot of room for uh, improving communication competencies. And the, the main reason I say that is if an artificially intelligent entity is going to learn management, it needs input. And people often say what they're going to do, but not why they do it. Mm -hmm. If you say what you're doing, 
then you can repeat that task, but it doesn't take context into consideration. Context is king in, in management. It's not just uh, an objective decision that you make. It has to be a decision that fits the moment. So I think a manager that is able to communicate, and maybe what it comes down to is at the end of the day, you end up doing a debrief. And you know the entity can then take this in as input, and then uh, it will learn about context, and it will learn about you know the choices of actions in, as they pertain to these contextual factors. Mm -hmm. So that that's a quite detailed communication that most managers, I think, don't do. Mm -hmm. They often just say, "Do this," and "Good job," "Bad job." That's it. And you'll need to be able to communicate more, I think, because. Humans can infer your intent. A machine can infer your intent. Not yet. It, it may soon. But you'll need to communicate it more explicitly. So I think communication competencies strike me as one that would be important. Mm -hmm. uh, another competency. I think another one that will be interesting will be coaching. And it won't be so much coaching the entity, but coaching the rest of the team during what will be an uncertain time. I think people will be nervous about having teammates that are artificially intelligent. Uh, in that, they it will be new. Anything new causes concern and causes mm -hmm. a bit of fear. People worry about losing their jobs. This is a, a common theme, you know, especially in what is blue collar types of jobs. People say, oh, the robot's gonna take my job. So you're gonna have a lot of uh, pent up emotions and a manager will need to manage those and, and be able to coach people to understand that this is a teammate, it's a, a tool that will help us be able to do more than we could do before and uh, get people to have the insights to use this tool properly. Because we'll have an idea of how to use it, but you know that's like, that's like any tool we've ever given to a worker. Who knows how to use the tool the best? The worker, not the designer of the tool. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they'll decide. So I think coaching will be, will be important. So I hadn't thought about this element before, but many of the competencies may not be for the entity, but it will be for the team that must now integrate this new, this new partner. Mm -hmm. Okay, so communicating and coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think those would, would come into play. Mm -hmm. So what's, uh, uh, it, it occurred to me that uh, we learn communicating from uh, a very early childhood and we cannot do it during the whole lifetime because yeah, yeah. we do it only on the very shallow level and we cannot communicate into deep level explaining the reasons, uh, our emotions, our values. So this is the area of, of teaching uh, managers, for example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? And I think those skills would be beneficial regardless of whether or not you had an artificial intelligent entity or not. Who wouldn't want a manager that communicates better? Mm -hmm. You know, so who wouldn't want a manager that could help me, could coach me so that I felt I could control my emotions? I think those are good competencies. So um, they're worth de developing anyway. I think they'll certainly come in handy if, if we start to bring in artificial intelligence into the workplace, but they would come in handy regardless. Yeah. So uh, thank you very much for your answers to my questions and for a uh, uh, wonderful talk Thank you. about the inter uh, artificial management and that artificial intelligence in the work uh, at generally. Uh, and uh, I hope that we will meet again in a few months and few, in a few years and we will check if our predictions wonderful. Uh, are true. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.